Hello, my name is Chris. Um, today I'm going to show you how to install Flask on Cloud9. Um, so for the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to actually open up a terminal window. Um, so pretty much this is going to be our bash uh, SSH open area. Um, so by default it's got our workspace and everything all set and ready to go. Um, so the first thing we'll check is that Python's installed. So we type Python and it's letting us know that 2.7.6 is installed in the system. Fantastic. So we're going to go to exit control D sorry and then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna install Python um, or not Python I'm sorry flask uh, basically flask is a eh, we'll call it a framework I guess it is a framework um, for Python to make development on the web much easier um, I've looked at other frameworks um, there are some really cool ones out there I found that flask is the easiest most prettiest and the quickest way to develop uh, an MVC framework um, with it as well too is it allows you to integrate basic Python essentials with regular Flask on top of it for the web so it gives you a little bit of both worlds so that way you can use both worlds without them conflicting um, so to install Flask it's really really easy actually so all we're gonna do is we're gonna hit sudo we're gonna go pip install and then we're gonna do Flask So it's downloading all the packages, installing it on our server, and now we have Flask installed on our system. And I wish it was just as easy as that. Um, pretty much just install it, bam, done. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to create a Python file. So if we go to a new file, and we're just going to name it app.py, we'll open that file up. Um, so inside here, we have to import a couple things first. Um, the first thing we're going to import is OS. Um, that's going to give us a lot of the main features from the operating system that we need. Uh, the second thing we're going to get is from Flask. Import Flask. Don't forget to capitalize that F. Um, it makes a difference. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to define our app. So we're going to say app equals Flask. And then we're going to give it our name. You can name it whatever you want. Right after that, um, pretty much now that we have the main imports done for the file, um, the next thing that we'll need is just to debug and to run the application. So down at the bottom, we'll say if application name is equal to the main, we're going to do app.run. And now it's going to run the application when it actually sees the application. Um, so now it knows that everything in between is going to be run ask Flask. Um, as well, too, is what I like to do is uh, we'll do debug. Uh, debug just makes life so much easier um, by default. Uh, Python and Flask don't have it. Um, Flask has a really nice way of implementing it into it, so it tells you what's wrong at which line so that way you're not sitting there for hours trying to debug. Um, it's really unsecure so I don't recommend it if you're doing it on a actual server but because we're in a production server using Cloud9 uh, we're gonna be able to use it just the way we want. Um, so now that we got the debug defined uh, we're just gonna make a test route just to make sure that we know that Python's gonna or uh, Flask is gonna be working. Um, so we'll say app.route and that's gonna create our actual route that we want to go to. And then uh, just for the index, all you got to do is that. Um, if you want to give it a specific directory name, um, you can just say whatever you want it to be. And then you have your directory name, bam. But just for demo purposes, we're just going to do the index. Um, so just like regular Python, it's kind of like getters and setters a little bit. Um, just to pinpoint exactly where you're going to give it to and where the data is going to route to. Um, right now, we're actually going to create a definition or a function. Uh, we'll just name it index. This you can call actual parameters into, kind of just like if it were JavaScript. Um, so say if I put like, um, we'll just say the ID in the actual URL, I can actually call that ID directly into here and it'll know to pass that item across. Um, it's really cool the way Flask works because it gives you like 
uh, JavaScript like based items for Python. <laughs> Um, so what we'll do is we'll just return something sent in. It will say, hello world, Flask is working. And basically now that we load the index page like that, it's going to return hello world, Flask is now working. Um, whereas if you print it out, it's just going to return it in the terminal line. Um, return will display, print will just give you print. Um, I mean, I guess there's no really other way to tell it. Um, but it, it helps, that's what basically helps differentiate the two different systems is that Flash you can run for web and Python you can still run Python with Flask on the web. So it gives you that full integration between the two. Um, so for the next thing that we're going to do, it's actually going to be the necessity for choosing where Flask is going to run to. Um, in Cloud9, I have specific settings for it, but uh, you can actually adjust these settings to whatever your server might be. Uh, because it's a virtual server, this is going to be running on 0.0.0.0, and then it's going to run on port 8080. Um, Flask actually runs, so like if we run it down here, say, uh, actually we'll save this file first. We'll app run app.py. So as you can see, it's running now on localhost with 5000 port. Um, so if we pull that up on this machine, it'll work. But there is no other way to access this but with inside this machine. Um, and actually, I'm about 90% sure with Cloud9, you can't actually access that URL anyways. Um, we'll just try it for the heck of it. Don't forget the port. Yeah, so it's not going to allow us to access it. Um, it's just because of the way Cloud9 runs, you have to specify a way to run it. Um, so we're going to stop this. Control C. Thank you. And the next thing that we're going to do is uh, we're actually going to define where we want it to go. So we can actually use Cloud9 to display things on the web physically. We'll say app.run. And then now everything that we're going to run is going to be inside here. Now. I did define the run down here, so yes, technically, I could put it inside here, but the problem is is that because the way Flask works, it's actually going to search through all this, and it's going to hit here first, but the way it runs, it's going to look for this first, and it's going to be able to run it on the browser before the code loads. Um, so if you actually nest it inside of here, it will not work. It'll continue to error out over and over and over and over, and it's a pain. It doesn't work. I've tried it 10 different ways, and it just does not work. Um, so we'll go to host. Um, we're actually going to define that with the base OS. Um, git and B. I think it's E and B. And then we're actually going to define the IP address inside here. So we'll say 0 0.0, no, that's 0. And then now we're going to have a comma, and now we're actually going to define the port. So we'll say the port is equal to an integer. And then we're going to define the actual port as 8080 because that's what's going to run as, as default. Um, so now that we have that defined, as you can see, it's going to allow us to actually run it inside of there. So we'll save that. So now, you know, we'll just go python.app, right? So here's the thing. When you go to run it through the regular terminal space, it doesn't work. Um, so if we go to 0, .0, .0, 0, 0, nothing. It's not going to work. No matter how hard you try, it will not work through here. Um, I quite don't understand why. It doesn't make sense to me, but these things just don't work. Um, so how do you get it to work? Well, it's pretty easy. This nice little run button up here does it for us. Um, basically what it's doing is I believe inside we actually have to run Python first and then run app.py. So as you can see here, it opened up a whole different window where we can actually run the actual program. 
Now, anytime you make changes to this app.py file, you have to restart the actual application. If you don't, it's not going to update the code and it's not going to know that you made changes to it. The only thing that it will know is that the HTML will make changes to it. So now that we have this installed, it gave us this nice pretty little URL. So that's what's the awesome part is Cloud9 is going to allow us to actually load this up inside of the browser. So if we pull that up, hello world, Flask is working. And just as an example too, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this to some random text. And we'll save that. But we're not going to update this. And we'll just go back over here and we'll refresh the page. As you can see, no matter how many times I refresh this page, it's not going to change. But now it shows that all the actual lists and the running of that file. Uh, which is pretty cool because you can actually get back error logs, 404 errors, what it's doing, see if it's getting, see if it's posting the data. Um, it helps when actually developing the full application. Uh, so if you actually click on this restart button, what it's going to do is you're just going to restart that app.py. And now if we actually go back to that window and we hit refresh, it changes our file. So each time that you actually make an update to that app.py, you have to restart the file. Um, same thing goes with even local development using Flask. Um, you have to restart it. It just does not know the difference. Um, it's like the same thing with like uh, the Google App Engine. Um, it doesn't actually know until you rerun it. Um, so it gets kind of tedious over time, but at the same time, it's good that it's like that because then it won't break as many things. And I mean, I love breaking things, but there's only a certain point before you go crazy. <laughs> Uh, so now you have a, a working Flash server on your Cloud9 development, and that's it. And thank you for watching.